Good evening, everyone. Good evening to everybody in the house, and good evening to everybody on the live. Um, we're here for Level Up today for fellowship. We're going to start with some worship. So, just to get into the attitude of worship, I just want everyone to really thank God for today. Thank Him for um, waking us up this morning because it's by His grace that we did. There are some people who went to sleep last night and they didn't wake up, but we're still here. For a reason, God has a purpose for each and every single one of our lives. So let's just thank God for his grace. Let's thank God for his faithfulness to each and every single one of us. Let's thank God for his unfailing love. Let's thank him for his mercies that are new every single morning. Thank him for journey mercies. Thank him for bringing us here safely. Thank him for his protection. Thank him for his provision. Thank him for the opportunity just to know him as well and to spend time in his presence today because there was a time where it really wasn't like this. It's really important that we understand the privilege and the honor that we have just to be able to spend time in his presence like this. Let's just take this opportunity to really welcome the Holy Spirit among us. Oh, 
Jesus name in the mighty name of Jesus Heavenly Father we thank you for this time of worship and we just pray ahead of the word Father I just pray that you would open everybody's hearts to receive I pray over Hannah who's going to be leading I pray that she would truly download every single thing that you're saying to her I pray that you would help her articulate her message Father in a way that we would be able to understand and Father I just pray for each and every single person who's still on their way I pray for journey mercies i pray that you would protect them father and also prepare their hearts as well for the message that we're about to hear in jesus name hi everyone take, whoa this is now take a seat take a seat thank you very much our wonderful worship team can we all give them a round of applause and also Smith, Daniel, and Joshua as well. Can we all give them a round of applause as well? Thank you very much, guys. Hi, come on in. Come on in, guys, take a seat. Come on in, guys, take a seat. Don't worry, there's plenty of room. Hannah, don't laugh at me, that's really rude. <laughs> Hi, guys, so welcome to Level Up, everyone. For those who don't know, my name is Hannah, and I'm gonna be sharing something um, today called What Is Your Legacy? So for those who haven't been to Level Up before, can't lie, we're just a group of young people who just love God and just come together in it. Like I don't know how more to explain who we are, but hopefully from my message today, you guys will sort of get a better understanding of what I'm about and sort of what my views on legacy is basically. So before I start, I'm just gonna do a quick prayer. So Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to share whatever I'm going to share today, oh Lord. I just pray that everything that I'm going to speak today, that Father, it comes directly from you. And I just pray that everything that we discuss and we talk about today, that is actually going to touch people's hearts and people are going to leave here changed in the mighty name of Jesus. I have prayed. Amen. So today's one is going to be a bit interactive, guys. So don't be scared if I throw questions out at you because I really will. And if I don't know your name yet, don't worry. I will, I will know your name and I'll throw questions out. So get ready for that, guys. So to start off, my first question is, what do you understand about the word legacy? Like, what do you think legacy means? Does anyone have any idea? Don't be afraid to put your hands up because I will pick on you. Dummy, yeah, I'm looking at you. <laughs> no, I'm joking. So anyone can literally just, what do you think of the word legacy? Like, what do you think it means? Go on, Shalom. Something you leave behind. Okay, interesting. Anyone else got anything to add on to that? Something you leave behind? No, yes, no. Okay, well, should, oh, Rachel, go on. Okay. Okay, so she says something that people will remember you by that you sort of left behind. No, you guys are basically right. Like, um, that was literally what I was going to say. So, I read this article online actually, and it defined legacy as when a person dies, the mark the individual left on the world represents that individual's legacy. It's about the richness of the individual's life, including what that person has accomplished and the impact he or she has had on the places and people. Ultimately, the story of a person's life reflects the individual's legacy, which is basically what Shalom and Rachel said about the word legacy. Come on in guys, take a seat. Um, it's basically what um, Rachel and Shalom said about um, the word legacy, so that's fine. So actually, before we start, I googled what legacy means, and it said the amount of money or property left in someone's will. So I was a bit confused because it didn't really talk about anything else but money or property. So it had me thinking, oh, okay, so does legacy mean that you can only leave behind money or property? Like, can you not leave behind, I don't know, a lasting impact on someone, or is it just like something physical? But that's something we're going to go on to a bit later. So in relation to legacy, do you guys think you need to die to have a legacy? Or can you have a legacy like right now? Would you, uh, we're going to do like a little poll. So put your hand up if you think you need to die to have a legacy. Don't worry. There's no right or wrong answer, guys. Okay, so put your hand up if you think you can have a legacy while you're still alive. Okay, that's basically the majority. I was going to count, but I'm not going to come and embarrass myself today. 
Um, so yeah, I agree with you guys. I don't think you need to die in order to have a legacy. I feel like everyone has their own individual legacy, like right now, like, because all of us, we've all been on this earth for, what, 18 years plus. We've all met people. We've all had impacts on people's lives. So yeah, we've all had a legacy, 100%. So, so do you think legacies can apply to like past situations? So for example, friendships, um, jobs, etc. Do you think legacies can apply? Just put a hand up if you think you can leave a legacy basically anywhere you go. Is that a yes, basically? Okay, cool. We're going to go into that a bit further. So where I'm going to start... <laughs> So I'm going to tell you guys about my week. So um, some of you may know I had this retail job recently. I'm not going to name the company before they come from my head. <laughs> You're so annoyed. Hi, guys. Welcome. Come on in. So I had this retail job recently, and I can't lie, I worked there for six weeks. Like, it wasn't any longer than that. I thought I was going to be there for maybe a couple of months, you know, get some extra money for the summer, but no, it wasn't like that. So basically how it was is that the place where I worked was very, very, very dysfunctional, like, Oh, are you guys touching my mic? Oh, <laughs> no, I'm joking. So yeah, the place where I worked, it was very dysfunctional. Like the management were a hot mess. The store was a hot mess. It was basically just a hot mess of a situation. So when I was there, I was like, okay, cool. God, why have you put me here? Do you know what I mean? Like, am I just here to make money? Am I just here to, you know, do whatever? But it basically took about three weeks or so before I was like, yeah, I can't lie. I can't, I can't work anymore. I need to leave. So I gave him my one week's notice two weeks later because I still wasn't ready to leave yet. And then as I gave him my notice, I, was, I wanted to be like, you know what, God, I don't even want to be here anymore. These people are annoying. I'm going to leave anyway. So why do I need to, you know, show up and actually be present? Do you know what I mean? So I could have had the attitude where I was like, I can't lie. I'm just going to go in. I'm not going to do my work properly. Yeah, they'll see me. I might even come in late. I might call in sick. I was telling the girls, like, oh, yeah, I might just call in sick one day because I really don't want to go in. But I can't lie. The Holy, the Holy Spirit really just sort of peppered me with that and he was like okay Hannah like what are you doing you need to fix up and then that's where he gave me the word of legacy and he was like okay what's your legacy gonna be at this workplace I was thinking god do I need to have a legacy I've only been working in retail for like four weeks so it's not that deep do you know what I mean but then he <laughs> but then he was basically saying no you know what Hannah like legacy is so important and it's not all about oh when you die you can literally leave a lasting legacy anywhere that you go so some people say that, oh, like your first impressions, that's what's most important. You know, when you're starting a new job, you know, you come in with your suit and, you know, looking all cute, looking at getting there on time, all that type of stuff. But that's not what only matters. What matters is how you last for the duration of that job, if that makes sense. So let's say now, let's say, okay, I've handed in my notice now. And I said to them, yeah, you know what, I'm not even going to work here or whatever. I'm just going to come in, be late, not do my job properly. Imagine how they would then think I was, you know what I mean? They'll think, oh, this is some lazy babe, like, she doesn't even care about what she's doing, all that type of stuff. But that wasn't what I was trying to portray there, if that makes sense. So, yeah, so um, as I sort of continued to go on, I had four shifts before I finished, literally just on Monday, just gone. And as I said before, God just sort of put the word of legacy into my mind, like, what do I want my legacy to be? And it was so weird because I can't lie, I didn't really talk to my colleagues, not gonna lie. I came up and I did what I needed to do and I bounced, you know what I mean? Because I was like, they're all old white women, like, I'm not really gonna relate to them and stuff. No, this is me being honest, I can't lie. I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna really relate to them, let me not chat to them, you know? But um, there was literally last week, one of the colleagues that I actually sort of spoke to a little bit, she was like, oh, Hannah, I don't want you to leave, all this type of stuff. She's saying how, oh, she's been so much happier since I've been here. I was like, why are you so much happier since I've been here? I've hardly talked to you, do you know what I mean? Like, I was thinking, I was thinking, why is she so much happier that I've been here and stuff? She was like, oh, no, but when you're around, you just bring this, like, positive vibe, positive atmosphere. I said, do I? Like, I was so baffled because I literally was just coming and going, you know what I mean? But it just showed that my legacy was sort of her, if that makes sense, the impact that I've had on her life. Even though I thought, oh, okay, if God's going to use me for this legacy thing, maybe he's going to use me to, I don't know, change the management of the store or do something like that. But the legacy was literally just that one woman's life. And I still have a number. Maybe I'm going to message her. Maybe I won't. I don't know. But it's one of the facts that I left a lasting impact on her life, if that makes sense. So the mor moral of the story is that no matter where you go, you may think you're not leaving a legacy behind, but you actually are. And that's sort of a positive and a negative. So if you're, I don't know, let's say you're going to uni now. Obviously, we're not in uni because, you know, corona. But let's say you were in uni now, you know, you get into your lectures late. You're there eating in the back of the, um, the lecture room. I know we've all done it, guys. I know we've all done it. Eating in the back of the lecture room. Let's say your seminars and stuff, you're not paying attention to what your lecturer says. Imagine sort of the impact and the legacy you're leaving on that place. Do you know what I mean? But also, if you're being positive and you're leaving like a positive impact, imagine how that's going to change the whole situation. Do you guys get what I mean? 
But, um, but yeah, so it's just about making sure that everywhere we go, we leave behind a positive legacy. Now, so we're going to talk about some celebrities. So, hi guys, come on in, take a seat. Hi friends. Hi Larry. Hi. <laughs> I'll just wait for these guys to sit down quickly. Okay, cool. So guys, we're going to talk about some celebrities. So I want you guys to shout out at me some celebrities that you think have left like a really positive legacy. Anyone can go and shout it out. Okay, so we had Chadwick Boseman, Beyonce, Martin Luther King. I heard a two-pack somewhere. <laughs> Honestly, any celebrities that you guys can think of that have left a positive legacy? Charlie Moore. Is he a celebrity? No, but I, I get what you mean. Okay, okay, cool. How about you guys? You guys have any celebrities that you think have left a legacy? What do you say, Sharon? Sorry? Kobe Bryant. Okay, yeah, he left a legacy. I mean, I wasn't into basketball, but he left a legacy. Well, it, it was basketball, right? Like, oh, thank God. Uh, thank God. <laughs> I made that mistake before, don't worry. How about you guys over here? Does anyone else have any celebrities that have left, like, a legacy that you guys know of? Tim who? You say Tim Bot too? I mean, this is why I don't talk to you because you just. Who? <laughs> Kim Jong, that, the guy in North Korea. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know who that is. So we're going to move on swiftly. But, you know, so I can't lie. <laughs> this girl said Kim Jong Un. I'm screaming. Okay, cool. So the celebrity that I'm going to talk about that has left a positive impact. I'm coming to him later, guys. Wait. Can't lie, it's Burner Boy, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> no, I'm gonna explain it, guys. Let me land, let me land. Rachel, relax, okay? No, but I can't lie, I'm a Burner Boy fan. Like, when I tell you guys, I've been listening to Burner Boy since I was like, what? 11? Like, 11, 12 years old? I've been listening to Burner Boy for time, innit? And if you guys know about Burner Boy, I don't know if you guys have been listening to him for time and stuff, but back in the day, he had a high top. I always say to my friends, like, if you don't know about High Top Burner Boy, then you really don't know about Burner, do you know what I mean? You don't know about 2012 Burner, 2013 Burner, but anywho. Guys, can you stop talking, please? Oh, thank you, Eunice. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, about Burner Boy, we're going to talk about Burner Boy's legacy, ultimately. So, I presume most of us have heard about Burner Boy. If you haven't heard about Burner Boy, I don't know where you guys have been living. But, um, so, with Burner Boy, his career or his aim sort of when he sort of um, came out as a music artist at first, it was obviously to, you know, make an impact in the Afrobeat industry in the UK and all that type of stuff. But as I actually did more research into him, and yes, I've done a lot of research into Burner Boy, I found out that his, <laughs> that his aim wasn't just sort of in music, it was more about like fashion and sort of everything outside of music. I don't know if you guys know that he does like fashion with like Boohoo and all the designers and all that type of stuff. Like it's not just music that he focuses on, do you know what I mean? I can't stand you guys. <laughs> I can't stand you guys, I can't lie. But um <laughs> but yeah, he's actually had an impact not just on music is basically what I'm trying to say. And that's literally his legacy. I don't know if you guys know but recently he won like a Grammy for was it album of the year? I, I might be getting that wrong. I don't know Sha. But <laughs> I know, but I don't know that much. Please, I've had exams, you know. I can't be following Burn every day. But, um, <laughs> but recently, he won the Grammy for whatever it was. And that's literally his legacy. That was literally his aim for so long. Like, this guy, he put in work. With his um, African Giant album, he put in work. With the Twice as Tall album, I know it's a bit controversial and some people don't like it, but he put in work, do you know what I mean? And that's his legacy. Yes, he's still alive. He's not dead. But he's done so much already in his career, do you know what I mean? So what I'm basically trying to say, using Burner Boy as an example, is that you don't need to be dead to have a legacy. Like, he's left a legacy so much. Even all these new artists that are coming through, I see how they're all trying to sound like Burner a little bit. I'm just like, can you stay in your lane, please? Like, you can never be Burner Boy, do you know what I mean? But, um, <laughs> but no, that's the impact that he's having. That's the legacy. He's paving the way for all these new artists to come through and sort of do their own thing in a place where, oh, they couldn't have done it before, if that makes sense. So yeah, that's basically just an example of someone who has a legacy. But someone mentioned Jesus before. Who was it you, Hannah, that mentioned Jesus? When I said a celebrity that had a legacy. I was getting on to that, gosh. But okay, so let's talk about Jesus then. So what do you guys think Jesus' legacy was? Again, you can just shout it out, raise your hand, do whatever. The gospel? 
Okay, can we go into a bit more detail than just the gospel? What did Jesus do that he, you know, left a legacy? I'm sure we all know it, but, you know, he died on the cross. Okay, what else did Jesus do? Anyone? He, is, is that a love? He loved. Don't say, say yes, he loved. He resurrected. What else did Jesus do, guys? Over here, anyone shout out. What did Jesus do? He taught. Well done, Shalom. Thank you. He healed. Okay. Anything else that Jesus did? He saved. Okay. Anything else that Jesus did, guys? Anything at all? Okay, that was a no. Okay, well, you guys have basically got it all anyway, to be honest. That's everything I had on my list. But when we're talking about Jesus' legacy, what I got was, first of all, he came to save us from our old nature, which is our flesh. And um, in First Peter 2, chapters 24 to 25, you don't need to get it out on your phones or anything. I'll read it. Um, First Peter 2, chapter 24 to 25 says, He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that, um, so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds you are healed. Once you were like sheep who wandered away, but now you have turned to your shepherd, the guardian of your souls. So that literally shows that, yeah, we can't lie, that's what Jesus did. He came to save our sins. He came to literally personally carry our sins on his body and literally nail it to the cross. Someone else said love. I think if there said love. He came to love as well. He came to spread love to people. I mean, sometimes that love was, you know, in the form of rebuking. For example, when he, like, rebuked Peter, when he was moving a bit mad, when he rebuked all the men in the temple and, you know, lifting over the table and all that type of stuff. He also came to love and rebuke. He also came to be an example to all of us today as to how we should um, live our lives in the way that he was very, very humble. <laughs> I wrote down here, oh, my gosh. I wrote down, it says, we never hear about him rolling around the streets of Jerusalem with their Range Rovers and wearing Christian Louboutins. And it's true, he wasn't, like, he was actually so humble. <laughs> this is literally what goes through my head when I'm planning these things, guys, honestly. But no, it's true, Jesus, he was literally the example of humility, do you know what I mean? Like, deep it, he was literally the son of God. He literally could have came down from heaven and literally wanted to be treated like a king, do you know what I mean? But no, he came to be born in a stable, he came to be really humble, he came to, when he went into Jerusalem, he came on the donkey, all that type of stuff. Like, he didn't come to be one of them big guys, you know, rolling around in their Range Rovers, like I said. But he came to be humble. Now, I'm not saying Range Rovers and Louboutins aren't humble, guys. Please, don't come for me. But that's just an example of what Jesus did in his humility. And I think Shalom mentioned it where he said he came to teach. So I wrote here, he came to educate. He came to teach the disciples why he was here to let them know his mission. Um, he came to teach them that God wanted them to live their lives differently to how they were living back then and they didn't have to sacrifice goats in the temple anymore to get closer to God he came to show them that the only way they can get to heaven was through God or through having a relationship with God or through Jesus all that type of stuff as it says in John 14 16 so that's basically a quick overview of what Jesus's legacy was now do you guys think that if Jesus didn't let's say for example Jesus didn't come down to earth do you think that life would be the same as we have it now basically so put your hands up if you think, yes, life will be the same as it is now. Put your hands In the world, yeah. Do you think the world would be the same if Jesus didn't come and do what he needed to do, basically? So put your hand up if, yes, you think, yeah, everything will be the same. We'll still be living the way we are. Okay, now put your hand up if you think, no, nah, it wouldn't be the same. Okay, now put your hand up if you think you're in the middle. Because Femi, I, I, I can tell you're in the middle. Right, more people in the middle. Right, so you guys actually think the world will be the same? Yeah, if Jesus didn't come. Like what? Give me an example. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. No, it doesn't, but okay. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I, I get what you mean. I get what you mean. I just wanted to get you guys to think. But honestly, I'm sort of where you guys are as well. I'm in the middle. Because part of me is like, okay, cool, the world would still be here. We would still have, you know, the world as a whole, because obviously God made that. What was that, Shalom? Yeah, exactly, but we wouldn't know him in the way we know now, you know. We would all be living in sin, living in our sinful nature, all that type of stuff. Guys, can you be quiet? Sorry, thank you. Um, we wouldn't have, you know, um, our spirit as we would now, because obviously Jesus is the one that sort of brought that upon us. But we would all be living in sin, I think. We'd all be, you know 
living a mad life, not going to lie. So yeah, that was Jesus' legacy. Now, moving on to my legacy now. This is the interesting part. So I just thought I'd share a little bit about myself and sort of what my legacy is, what I want my legacy to be. So the way I've done mine is that I've broken it down into like different categories. So I've got, okay, cool, my legacy to do with like university, to do with like my business, to do with my family, to do with my like career. I've sort of broke it down into categories basically. So when it comes to my legacy in relation to my degree or my education, I said I want my legacy to show people that Jesus is real. I want to um, glorify God with my degree. Even when it comes to, you know, my whole education journey, like it's literally been, I can't lie, it's been a hot mess so far, I'm not gonna lie. Let me tell you guys, yeah, in year 12, year four, was it A, was it ASG doing year 12 or A2? ASG doing year 12, I'm telling you, I was getting Ds, I was getting Es, like honestly, Luckily, I, d I didn't get F. If I got F for you, I actually would have cried. Oh, sorry, fella. It's okay. <laughs> it's true you're here regardless. But yeah, like when I was in year 12, can't lie, my grades were atrocious, like absolutely atrocious. It's one of the ones where I was scared, oh, am I even going to get into uni? Like it was one of the ones that was that deep, you know. I was even thinking, rah, do I need to do, what was that deferral gap year thing? I was thinking, yeah, it's a bit sticky. But then when it came to year 13 now, can't lie, God literally gave me a kick up the bottom. I was in the library basically every single day. God literally helped me get through it so much to the fact that I actually um, finished my A-levels with like A's and B's and stuff. Uh, fam, honestly, the way he done that, fam, I'm telling you because, ah, it wasn't me. No, 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 it definitely wasn't me because, fam, A-levels are hard. You guys have been through it, innit? A-levels aren't easy. I think everyone has like a testimony, like a story of where like A-levels try to kill them, what I do anyway. A levels really just came for our deck. But you know, we can just glorify God, we're here. You know, I mean, we made it to uni, guys. We made it. But ah, uh, it's not easy, Sha. Anywho, moving on. Um, so in relation to my business, I don't know if some of you guys know or not, but I um, run my own business. <laughs> you guys are annoying. Um, I run my own business called Wigs by Hannah, and with that one, like we sell like wigs, hair extensions, all that type of stuff. And um, my legacy that I want to leave with that is actually something that's, I don't want to say it's quite scary, but even writing it down, I was like, ah, oh, is this really what I want to do? Like, it's quite big. So my aim is to sort of empower and encourage women all over the world and help them to understand that they're already beautiful regardless of what they have on their head. Do you know what I mean? Ah, oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> you guys are so cute. But yeah, that's the legacy that I want to leave regarding that. And it's like... Me even writing that down, I can't lie, it was hard. I said, God, is this really what you want me to do with this business? I'm just like, okay, cool, God, I'm just going to trust you and, you know, put it all before you and stuff. But basically, the reason why I'm telling you guys what my legacy is is because I want you guys to understand that it's like a process, it's like a journey. It's one of the ones where, like, you don't just wake up one day and then you just have your legacy, do you know what I mean? You have to put in work beforehand, if that makes sense. So let's say for you guys now, let's say, I don't know, someone's a footballer. And let's say, oh, they want to be, I don't know, the footballer that has the most goals in the world or something. Like, we need to put in work to get to that legacy, if that makes sense. Even when it comes to our degrees and stuff, okay, let's say you want to graduate and leave uni with, like, I don't know, a 2 1 or a first. You're not just going to wake up on graduation day and have your 2 1 or first. You know what I mean? You have to put in the work beforehand. So it's the same thing with our legacies that we have for ourselves. It's like, okay, cool. Let's say you say, oh, I want to be, I don't know, I want to be this person that's, I don't know, really inspirational to young people. You have to put in the work from now, and it's never too early to start putting in the work to leaving your legacy. And it's one of them ones where, um, oh, I can't remember the celebrity's name, God. I read the autobiography ages ago, but it was some celebrity, some white woman. She wasn't really that, I mean, she was famous, but she wasn't famous for like, anything we know, basically. But I was reading her autobiography one day, and she said that from when she was young, she tried to, um, she tried to, uh, build her property like portfolio thing and that's the legacy that she wanted to leave and pass on to her children etc so with her she literally started working on that from the age of like five I think like, it was mad yeah five five years old you know yeah to be into property at five years old wow but basically yeah she started learning about property you know as much as you can as a five-year-old she started to do that from when she was so young and she wanted to continue and continue and she actually wanted to pass down this like massive property empire onto her children and that's literally what she's done well i mean she hasn't passed away at the time already but she's passed away now but to think that okay cool she had this legacy she had this idea of what she wanted to do she put in the work all throughout her life to do it and she finally got there and she actually had the opportunity to pass down 
put all her like property empire onto her kids that like, I just thought no nah, that's actually amazing and it just shows that all of us here we can have our own personal legacies we can have our goals and our dreams and our aspirations and things we want to achieve and it's like yeah it's all good having these things I'm not saying oh you guys shouldn't dream or aspire to do stuff no definitely not but it's like you sort of what's that phrase faith without works is dead or something like that you guys need to be putting in the work as well even with uni, I use that as an example for, okay, ex this is exam time, revision time, whatever. Let's say you guys, oh, yeah, you want to do well in your coursework, you want to do well in your exams, all that type of stuff. Yeah, you can say it with your tongue and you can believe that God is going to help you, but you guys also need to be putting in the work as well. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, that's that in relation to legacy. Now, Carla, I'm almost done, but the one thing I wanted to do before I leave here is for you guys to start thinking about your own personal legacies. Now, you don't need to share this with anyone else or whatever. Literally just have a conversation with God in your mind. Just be thinking, okay, cool. What do I want my own personal legacy to be? What do I want to be known for? What do you want people to say about you when you leave university, when you leave Birmingham? You could even move across the, road, or across the world and go to New Zealand, I don't know. But wherever you go, what do you want your legacy to be? What do you want people to say about you when you're not there? Do you know what I mean? And once you have an idea of what you want to be known for, then it's the opportunity for you guys to start making progress towards it. So as I said before, it's going to take work. It's not going to be an easy thing to do. But it can literally just be small steps that you're taking every single day. So once again, with the example of uni, okay, cool, let's say you want to graduate with a first. Okay, that means, okay, in year one, I need to get this grade, or roughly, in year two, I need to get this grade, in year three, I need to get this grade. So it's just putting in the work to leave that legacy, if that makes sense. And um, if you guys don't have an idea of how you can sort of start making steps towards your legacy, I'm just going to leave you with this point. So going back to the Google definition of legacy, it is an amount of money or property left to someone in a will. Now, we all understand that we're sons and daughters of God, yeah, and that our inheritance has already been granted for us. So we're lucky because we don't need to worry about, oh, what am I going to get in my will or in someone's will that they left for us? We don't need to worry about that because Jesus has already paid the price for us and our inheritance is the salvation. That's literally all that's written on the will, do you know what I mean? And it's one of the ones where we already have this. So as soon as we um, sort of realize this and once we give our lives to Christ, it's like, okay, cool, we've already got it. So that's literally our inheritance. That's literally all we need. And that's literally the starting point to all these other things that I've mentioned about, oh yeah, getting a first class uni degree or doing your business or doing whatever. That's literally the first bit is understanding that you have salvation and understanding your identity in Christ and that your old nature has passed away. So does anyone have any questions in relation to what I spoke about today, about legacy, about how to build your legacy, anything like that at all before I finish? Because I've... I did go on quite a bit, but anyone have any questions at all about legacy? It was pretty straightforward, but if you don't have any questions, that's fine. You can always come and talk to me afterwards or like message me if you have my number or anything like that. But yeah, I want to thank you guys for listening to my quick talk about what is your legacy. Um, before I finish as well, I just want to remind you guys that your legacy is something that is so important. It's something that is literally going to I don't want to say follow you when you die, but literally it's going to follow you when you die. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to talk about death because I thought oh, death is a bit sad. But in reality, it's true. Death is the only thing that's sort of, um, that sort of, what's that word? That's sort of guaranteed in this world. You can't lie. Death and that's it. And it's one of the ones where you don't want to pass away and then sort of not live your life to the fullest or worry about, oh, I should have done this. I should have done that. Blah, blah, blah. Like, Live for the now, do you know what I mean? Live on working and building your legacy now before that time comes where, you know, God, you know, lifts us from this earth and stuff. But, yeah, I just want to thank you guys for listening and I hope you've enjoyed it. So I think before we finish, do you guys want to do a bit more worship tonight or not? Okay, so before we finish, we're literally just going to do a little free flow worship because the girls that were practicing earlier before we started and I can't lie, the Holy Spirit was doing something mad, I'm not going to lie. Like, the Holy Spirit was moving, do you know what I mean? So we thought, you know what, before we finish tonight, we're actually just going to do a bit more free flow worship. So can we have the instrumentalists back to their sections, please? Smith, yeah, I'm talking to you. <laughs> Unless, Femi, do you want to play the keys for us today? <laughs> and Daniel, can we have you back on the bass as well? Thanks, mate.
Okay, cool. So I'm going to pass it on to Rachel. Are you going to lead it for us? <laughs> Do you guys want it on or off? Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, guys. Guys, can I have your attention, please, everyone? Guys, thank you. Okay, cool. So before we move on to the worship, I'm just going to do a quick prayer before we go. So Heavenly Father, I just want to give you thanks for the word that I was able to share today. Father, I just pray that it will leave a lasting impact on everyone that is listening, both physically here and on the live stream as well. And Lord, I literally just want to give you all the glory all the praise, all the adoration. And I just want to thank you, Lord, for every single person that is even here in this auditorium today and watching on live as well. It's not a coincidence that they're here. It's not a coincidence that they came here today to hear this word and to fellowship with everyone. So, Lord, I just pray that we'll all sort of um, dwell in that and we'll just remember that at the end of the day, we're here to worship you. We're here to glorify you. Yeah, we're here to see our friends, you know, just and all that type of stuff, but I just don't want anyone here to sort of miss the importance of why they're here today. And I just want to thank you, Lord, once again. And I commit Rachel's worship into your hands in Jesus.